my opening statement will be what a great win by Coach Dutcher in the basketball program last night. I always tell my wife they play four quarters for a reason. Uh, she was trying to trying to back out at, at halftime because the first half started off a little shaky, but man, they finished strong and huge win for basketball and hopefully gives them momentum running into uh, the most critical part of the season. Can you tell us a little bit about the team coming in this year? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, new coaching staff. Half the roster is new, so a lot of new faces. Uh, that was one of the things for me uh, in the fall where I had to take a step back and just say, hey, you got to let all these people gel and, and morph together organically. And I think that that's happening. Um, definitely coming back from the Christmas break, I felt like our, our group was starting to gel together and um, feel like we're in a really good place for competition now. Uh, last couple of weeks has been a lot of inner squads and I think our guys are getting tired of playing each other. And that's a, always a good thing because now they're ready to unleash on, on an opponent coming up this weekend. Can you go over who's uh, established themselves as starting in the, long, the regular line and then the rotation? Yeah, uh, starting rotation is obviously I think it's been put out already by, by Jim, but Chris Canada is going to be on Friday night. Saturday will be Omar Serrano, and Sunday will be Xavier Cardenas. A little bit of experience on Friday and Saturday. Those guys have been on the weekends the last couple of years. Cardenas got his feet wet last year out of the bullpen, and I think Sunday's a good spot for him. Obviously, from a, a draft perspective and, and stuff-wise, he's, he's very talented and coming out of high school, highly regarded. Um, but we're going to put him on Sunday just to ease him in slowly into Division I weekend rotation. Uh, the lineup, uh, Xavier Gonzalez will be at short. Um, he played, played there last year for us. First base will probably be Brady Lavoie, uh, another older guy transferring from NC State. Second baseman is more than likely going to be a freshman, Finley Bates. Third base will be a freshman, Colby Turner. Evan Sipe will start behind the dish. Center field will be Irv Weems, right field Montoya, and left field is probably going to be a freshman, Jake Jackson, a local San Diego guy. I think the preseason prediction was for you guys fourth place. Mm -hmm. What was your feeling on seeing that, and what would your expectation be? Motivation. Thank you for giving us motivation. Um, you know, I, I may look through a different lens just because I'm, I'm biased. I'm here in San Diego, and I'm at San Diego State, and. I think, I think we have the best location. We have great uh, resources here. We have Tony Gwynn Stadium. We're in the land of recruiting. So I think that every year we should be at the top of the conference or dominating the conference. So um, to pick us fourth, I, I, like I said, it's motivation. I appreciate that. Um, it definitely went up in our locker room. What expectations do you have for your first year and then uh, first year, win the conference, get into a regional. Second year, super regional. Third year, going into Omaha. Um, if we, we fall short shooting for the stars, then that's on me at the end of the day. But I'm not going to dance around it. I'm not going to say this is a rebuild year or any of that stuff. This is a foundational year for the program. And the expectations here should be high. Sean, is the transfer portal been any use to you at San Diego State? It has. Like I said, Brady's playing first, and we need him to put up some numbers. Now, Brady's from San Diego, so that was another advantage bringing him in. Um, but, you know, if he produces like I think he should, uh, that, that's going to be a huge get out of the portal. Uh, we brought in a kid named Jacob Reardon out of the state of Georgia this year, a big right-handed pitcher. I think he's going to factor in early for us also. Um, but we've had some large freshman classes coming in. So the portal, we haven't gone as heavy. I've looked at the portal more as a free agent, free agency and supplementing in areas that we need to upgrade. And we'll definitely continue to do that. I'm still on the other side of building culture and developing high school talent. Uh, where the portal, I think, has helped us. And we'll, you know, we'll see over the next couple years. But we've taken advantage of some high school prospects that were signed by Power 5 programs. and. They cut them loose late because of the transfer portal, and we, we cap, capitalized. Uh, a local, local one is uh, Chase Klimke at Torrey Pines, who was committed to Stanford. 
Um, I was recruiting him before he committed to Stanford, and now he's now he's an Aztec. Evan Miranda's on our roster this year, decommit from Texas. I recruited him out of Olu before he committed to Texas. I think that's a huge get for us. Um, and I'm drawing a blank. We have one more that we recently capitalized on. We actually just had a kid on campus that decommitted from Cal uh, from Temecula that we offered this weekend too. So. I'm looking at the portal in two different ways. One, take advantage of some of those high school guys that were very talented that those programs liked out of high school. And if they need a home, we're definitely gonna, gonna be on top of it and recruit those guys. And then, like I said, um, if there's areas that we see that need to be improved at the end of this season, then we'll dip into the portal and improve those areas. Does NIL impact you guys in particular? I think it's too early to answer that question. Um, obviously, the SEC is capitalizing on it a lot. Uh, they, they have a lot more money and resources to, to work with than most places in the country, and, and they're using it to their advantage right now. Uh, but it's too early on NIL to see how it's all going to shake out over time and, and um, see if it truly impacts us in the long haul. I still think one of the ways we can counter that is we're in San Diego, and it's a great location, and there's a lot of history with this program. So um, if we come up short on NIL money, we can offer a lot of other things in, in um, other areas. Within the Mountain West itself, has there been, have you seen any NIL impacts? Not yet. No. Sean, there's so many ex-Aztecs that are playing ball, you know, obviously from Strasburg to Ty France, et cetera. Is there any consortium of getting ex-Aztec players together Help you fund baseball, home run, NIL. We're working on that. I don't want to get into too much detail, but we're working on it. Yeah. That, that goes back to what I said. Our alumni base is too strong. Um, and they're all huge supporters of the program. They want to see the program grow and excel. I think next year when we have our golf tournament and, and we get everybody in the same room and they hear more of the vision and uh, hopefully see some progress with this year's season, uh, they're going to get more involved. But I definitely have had some very positive conversations in, in those areas. In week two is the Tony Wynn Legacy event. Can you talk a little bit about that event and what it means means a lot, the Gwynn family. Uh, obviously, you know, Tony Gwynn has meant a lot to the city of San Diego, San Diego State. Uh, getting Chris and Anthony back on the field, we were talking about that before we just started here. Um, Chris Gwynn's going to throw out the first pitch. Uh, Anthony is, is based off his schedule with the Padres. He's going to try to get out here, um, and just the tournament itself, I think, means a lot to San Diego, and that's another one that I'm still striving to continue to grow and um, hopefully somewhere down the road have a stronger partnership with the Padres and getting the Tony Gwynn Classic over to Petco Park. As we move forward. All those areas, alumni, Chris and Anthony coming back. I mean, Anthony sounds like Tony. <laughs> so just having him walking around the yard talking, talking baseball is pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, we play the, uh, what is it, um, the 30 for 30 ESPN, I think, what was it? Uh, shoot, Mr. Gwynn, or we play that every year for the team. We talk about Tony. Um, if you don't, if you didn't see him play, you can go on Twitter and pretty much see five or six tweets about him almost every day and what he did or videos. And uh, we're always encouraging our players to go back and look at what players have done, not just Tony, but Babe Ruth, Nolan Ryan. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick story. I was with the San Diego Padres and Joey Lucchese was in the minor leagues and we were talking one day about Nolan Ryan and. He goes, is Nolan Ryan a left-handed pitcher? And I said, okay, Joey, you need to go research Nolan and you're going to present. And similar with our guys, we, you need to know the history of the game. Don't, don't get too disconnected. It all didn't start with Barry Bonds. Um, so beyond just Tony, we're always trying to educate these guys on, on players and, and, yes, people that come around and talk. Uh, David Eckstein's a good friend of mine, and they don't know who David is, which is crazy. Um, it wasn't that long ago he was playing just up the street. Uh, for the Angels. So um, definitely getting them beyond just looking at clips of home runs and strikeouts, dig deeper into the history of this game. Is there any way to define why 
by San Diego State with all its history and success in other sports and being here in the sunshine. My Aztec baseball has not been able to become on an annual basis when Fullerton and Cal Irvine have become it. Is there any rationale as to why that is the way it is? Uh, I don't want to speak too much on the past because I wasn't here, so I, I can't speak firsthand. But just from the outside looking in and conversations, one of the reasons why I'm here is Mark reached out to me about uh, upgrading our, our pitching and, and pitching numbers to get out of a regional and get into a super and get into Omaha. So um, I know pitching in the past has been solid. I think in the last dec decade or so, it started to slip a little bit. So that was one of the areas. Offense has always been really good here until most recently. Um, which is a little bit of a head scratcher. I don't think it was a lack of talent. Um, so that's that's definitely something we're trying to improve on right now. And that's why I hired three offensive coaches to come in and get defense and offense in a better place. And I think if we can get all three of those hitting on all cylinders, it doesn't have to be top of the conference in every category, but just improvement in those areas and have balance to our team, then that puts us in a better position to go deeper in postseason play.